Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are creating this website using Next.js. Now in this video, we will protect the routes of our application. So right now, if we go over here to dashboard, we can see that we are redirected to sign in because we haven't signed in. And if you go to the create post page, so let's tap create post, we are redirected to sign in. And now let's go ahead and sign in. Now we can see we are signed in and uh, we are able to go to the dashboard and uh, if you go to create post page we are able to go to this page but if you go to the sign in page so let's tap sign in here we can see that we are redirected back to the dashboard so this is how our routes are protected so let's go ahead and implement this and we'll also add these uh, details over here in our pop-up so let's do all of that in this video let's get started Right here we are in our application so let's go to our source code and uh, first of all let's go to this create post page and uh, now if we go over here to create post we can see that we are able to access this page without logging in. So for that let's go back to our code and uh, here we need to get the session and uh, for that we're going to use get server session from next auth. So let's tap import get server session from next auth next and we also need to get the auth options so here we can see we have the auth options so let's go ahead and export this as well so let's tap export const auth options and uh, let's get it over here so here in the create post page so let's go ahead and type import auth options from this path and we also need to import redirect so let's type import redirect from next navigation Right now let's go ahead and get the session so let's tap const session equals await get server session and here we need to pass auth options and since we are using await we need to change this into an async function so let's tap async first of all let's go ahead and console.log the session so let's tap console.log session and let's open the terminal and right now we can see that it displays null because we are not logged in so let's log in and now let's go back to the create post page and now we can see we have the details displayed we have the name email and the profile image so now we can go ahead and type if exclamation session so if the session is not available then we need to redirect to the sign in page so let's tap sign in so now if you go ahead and sign out and now if you go over here to create post page we can see that we are redirected to the sign in page so let's go back to create post and we are redirected back to sign in let's do the same for the dashboard so here we have the dashboard page now this page also should not be accessible without signing in so let's go ahead and copy these three lines of import from here and let's go over here to dashboard and let's paste it over here and here let's go ahead and type const session equals await get server session auth options and let's change this into an async function and uh, here let's add an if condition and let's type exclamation session and we'll just redirect to the sign in page and now if you go back and if you go to the dashboard we are redirected back to the sign-in page and if we sign in and now if we go to the dashboard we are able to access this page right now let's go back and uh, we have the sign-in page so let's go to the page and here also we need to redirect to other pages if the user is signed in so here let's paste the imports and here let's tap const session equals await get server session auth options and uh, async function and here we need to check whether we are signed in so let's type if session and we'll just redirect to the dashboard so let's tap dashboard over here and now if we go back and if you go to the sign in page we are redirected back to the dashboard but if we sign out we are able to go to the sign in page right, so with that we are able to protect all our pages 
Now let's go ahead and add this pop-up that we have when we sign in. So here we can see we have this uh, profile picture displayed over here. And we also have this create new button. And if I click on this, we have this pop-up where we have the name, the dashboard link and the create post link. And we also have this sign out button. So let's create this. So let's go ahead and sign in. And let's go back to our code and let's go to the nav bar. Now here let's go ahead and go to this uh, status authenticated. And when we are authenticated, let's go ahead and uh, create a react fragment. And we will add all the code inside this react fragment. So here let's go ahead and hide this for now. I just type class name hidden. And now just go ahead and uh, type image and uh, let's import image from next image and here we need to add the profile image and uh, here let's add a source and the source is going to be the profile image so for that let's go over here and uh, we also need to get the data so here let's type data and uh, let's rename it to session and now let's go ahead and uh, here in the source let's type session and if we have the session in that we will have the user and in the user we have the image and uh, we also need to add the width and the height so let's have width and let's set it to 36 pixels and let's set the height to 36 as well and let's add an alt and here let's type profile image and now this can also be null so let's add an or and here we need to add another image so for now i'll just leave it blank right now let's go back to our website and here we have this error because we are getting the image from an external website. So let's copy this link from here. And just like we did for the Pexels website, let's go over here to next config and let's add the domain over here. Right now, let's go ahead and restart our server. And let's go back and let's reload this page. And now here we can see our profile image is being displayed but it is not being displayed correctly. So let's go back and here let's add a div and we'll add this image inside this div. And now if we go back, we can see that it is being displayed correctly. Now here for this image, let's also type class name and let's type rounded full so that it has a round shape. Now here we'll also add the create new button. So here before the image, let's create a link and in this link, we will add an icon so let's tap span and let's get the icon from heroicons.com and let's search for create and let's get this icon right here so let's click on copy jsx and let's paste it over here and here we need to add a text so i just add it inside a span and let's tap create new and here for the link we need to add an href and let's set it to the create new page so we have this page called create post so let's add that over here create post and uh, now we can see we have this create new button and this should be on the left side and the image on the right side so here for this div let's tap class name and let's set the display to flex we'll add a gap of two and uh, let's type items center and now here for the link we need to add this icon on the left side so here for the link also let's add class name and let's type display of flex and a gap of two and uh, items center and uh, it is not working so let's see what's the problem now here we can see that we have added this span inside the other span so let's cut it from here and let's add it outside this span and now we can see we have the button displayed correctly so if we click on this button we are taken to the create post page now let's also add some margin right to this button. So here let's type MR and let's set it to 6. And that looks alright. And if you go back to the original website and let me just sign in. Now if we decrease the width of the browser window. Here we can see that when we are on smaller screens, we don't have the create new button displayed. So let's add that functionality. Here let's type hidden. And we'll just display it for medium screens or higher. So let's sign in. And let's go ahead and decrease the width of the browser window. 
and when we are less than a certain amount we can see that the create new button is hidden right now let's go ahead and create the pop-up so before that let's go ahead and set the cursor to pointer for this image so here for this image let's type cursor pointer right now let's go ahead and create the pop-up so here we can see when we click on this uh, profile image we have this pop-up so let's add that so let's go back to our code so here we have this div and in this div we will add the pop-up so the first thing we will do is we will position this div relative to this main container division over here so here for this main division let's go ahead and set the position to relative and now let's scroll down and here let's remove the hidden and let's type position of absolute and let's add a z index of 30 and let's set the right position to 0 and the top position to 20 and let's set the background color to white and let's set the padding to 6 and let's add a shadow of large and let's type rounded MD for rounded corners and let's set it to flex flex call and let's add a gap of 2 and let's set the text to right and we will have a minimum width of 160 pixels and now let's go back and here we can see we have the pop-up right now we just have this sign out button so let's go back and let's add all the other elements so let's go ahead and create a div and this will be for the name so let's type session and if we have the session in that we will have the user and in that we have the name and now we can see we have the name displayed so let's go ahead and make it bold so let's type class name font bold and the next thing we will do is add the dashboard link so let's create a link element and here let's type dashboard and for the href let's type dashboard and then we will have the create post link so let's type link and let's set the href to create post and here let's type create post and we can also add the email if you want so i just type div and let's type session user email and here we can see we have all these details inside our pop-up now we need to hide and display this pop-up when we click on this profile image so for that let's create a state and here let's type const and let's call it is pop-up visible and here let's type set is pop-up visible and here let's type use state and let's import it from react and by default we'll set it to false now here in this pop-up division I'll just go ahead and add a conditional so let's cut this flex from here and here I'll just add all of this inside backticks and let's add all of this inside curly braces and here let's type dollar symbol curly braces and let's type is pop-up visible and if it is visible then we'll just set the display to flex or else we'll just set the display to hidden and now we can see it is hidden but if we change this to true now we can see that the pop-up is being displayed now let's go ahead and change the value using on click so here let's go ahead and for the image let's add an on click and here let's call the function so let's tap set is pop-up visible and we'll just set it to the opposite of the previous value so to reference that i'll just tap priv and uh, here let's type exclamation priv and now if we go back here we can see that when we click on this we have the pop-up displayed and if i click on it again it disappears now when we hover over this uh, we need to have underline so let's go back and uh, let's add that so here for this link let's type class name let's type hover underline and let's do the same for this link let's type class name hover underline and now when we hover over this we have the underline and now if we click on this link we are taken to the create post page but the pop-up is still here so when we click on these we need to hide the pop-up so here let's add an on click so let's tap on click and here let's tap set is pop-up visible to false and let's do the same for this link let's type on click 
and set is pop up visible to false and now if you click on this link the pop up is hidden now when we click outside this pop up the pop up should disappear so let's add that functionality now for that we need to create a reference for this pop up and for that we will use use ref so here let's type const and let's call it pop up ref and here let's type use ref and the type will be html div element or null and uh, by default we'll just set it to null and let's import use ref from react so let's type use ref right now let's scroll down and here for this pop-up let's add a ref and let's set it to pop-up ref right now the pop-up ref is set to this division now let's go ahead and uh, add the functionality so we will use use effect for that so let's type use effect and uh, let's create an arrow function over here and for the second argument we need to have the dependency array so here i'll just add is pop-up visible so whenever this value changes we will execute this code now here we need to create a function and let's call it handle click outside and uh, here we will get an argument and I'll just set the type to mouse event and here we'll just add an if condition and uh, here let's type popup ref dot current ampersand ampersand and let's type exclamation popup ref dot current dot contains and here we need to type e dot target and uh, let's set it as a node and if this condition is true then we will set is pop up visible to false so let me just explain this line to you now here first of all we are checking whether the pop up ref is set to a dom element and after that we are adding this condition which checks whether the click that occurred was outside the pop up ref so here we can see that we are getting the value from this e variable over here and we are checking whether the user has clicked outside the pop up ref and if the condition is true so if the user has clicked outside the pop-up then set is pop-up visible should be set to false right now let's go ahead and add an event listener to the document so let's tap document dot add event listener and let's listen for the click event and here let's tap handle click outside and we'll also remove the event listener when the pop-up is not visible so let's tap if exclamation is pop-up visible document dot remove event listener click and handle click outside now in use effect you can use return to clean up our resources so here let's type document dot remove event listener click handle click outside so this code will make sure that our pop-up is closed when we click outside the pop-up so let's go ahead and check it out so here we have this profile image let's click on it and we have the pop-up displayed let's click outside and the pop-up disappears so it is working all right if we click inside the pop-up it doesn't disappear so everything is working all right and let's click on sign out and here we have the sign in button all right so that's basically it for this video and uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.